Can we learn anything from the way other countries either guard against these terrorism attacks or the way they investigate them? Well, there's always been tremendous cooperation, Pim, between our law enforcement community and, and some of the leading ones overseas. The sports security is a very challenging, uh, challenging concept for us because we do really well in enclosed environments, in stadiums and arenas. But when you're looking at a marathon course, I ran Boston in 2010, 2011. You have 26 plus miles of area to secure. You can do your best work at the beginning and at the end, uh, but there's no way you can fully secure the whole area. Area. So, as you might imagine, London Marathon, which is coming up shortly, they're going to be talking to the organizers in Boston. They're going to review their security as well. You're going to see heightened states of alert. You're going to see more police deployed to increase the deterrence uh, presence as well. But ultimately, these type of open, open-ended sports events are almost impossible to fully secure. So it's about managing risk. How do you maintain and manage the risk the best way possible? Tim, screen managing risk, does this also mean increased identification, increased screening of individuals that would attend events such as this? Definitely. Uh, people coming in the area, you want to try to get a grasp on who's going to be in there. That's doing prior and post uh, analysis of that. Gene West, you have experience, personal experience, surviving and dealing with bomb blasts. What's it like to actually be in that situation? Well, I can tell you that I was at the 911 uh, collapse, and I was caught in that collapse. I also tripped a booby trap in Vietnam, and I was at the 93 bombing. Now, I was, the actual tripping of the booby trap in Vietnam is, is more consistent with what happened here in Boston. The 911 event was more of getting caught in a collapse. And, uh, and then experiencing sensations that you've never spe uh, experienced before. Now, tripping the booby trap, uh, one of the things that uh, I, I recall is that when that booby trap tripped, you, there's no sensation of sound. There's a floating through the air as you're propelled into the air. There's no sensation of any pain. And, and soldiers in Vietnam knew when they hit the ground and they came uh, out of that explosion event is to check for all their limbs and to see if they were still there because, again, there's no sensation of, uh, of pain. And the first thing you want to know if your legs are there, your hands are there. And some of these people in Boston experience that type of sensation. I'm sure that some of these people who suffered these amputations may not have even been aware that they had lost a limb. And that, that sort of hit home for me when I saw that. Now, the 911 collapse was something different. That was turning day into night and getting caught in a collapse situation and not knowing whether you were dead or whether you were alive and standing in, in what was once a beautiful spring day and now was completely dark and any voices you heard sounded like they were in the echo chamber. And that's what I teach some of my students at the FBI National Academy. I, I show them that film and then, and then I give them that firsthand experience. But the Vietnam experience was more consistent with what happened in, in, in Boston. Does every uh, event such as this, every explosion have its own signature? Yes, but you got to understand is there's, there's two types of signatures. First of all, there's the signature of the explosion. There are certain things that certain explosives do, but there's also the signature of the bomb maker. So we're looking for two types of signatures here. But the explosion has its own signature. And in part, I gave you a little bit of what the signature of this type of event was.